I think healthcare professionals need to be very cognizant of the fact that people can have severe reactions to 5-FU and capecitabine. Historically, we think of these as pretty benign drugs. We've had 5-FU out since the 60s. Um, we tell people, oh, it's one of our oldest and you know most tried and true chemotherapies, very well tolerated, you shouldn't have any trouble at all. Um, and I think that can be a disservice to the patient because they may think, oh my goodness, I'm having all these side effects, but that's not supposed to happen. I'm not gonna report those side effects. I don't want the doctor to discontinue my treatment. That's the, the opposite of what we need. We need people to realize that they can have severe side effects. We don't see it in many patients, but in the event that you are that person that has that severe toxicity, we need to hear from you, we need to intervene, we need to be able to give you an antidote. Um, we need to look at administering Vistagard within that 96 hour window. It could really save someone's life. I think for treating oncologists, the practical advice when considering Vistagard, it's really more about recognition of the toxicity itself um, or the potential overdose rather than drug administration. The, the drug administration is relatively easy, the drug is well tolerated, and the course is only five days. Uh, given the known side effects, uh, which are primarily GI, so nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea, uh, it would not be unreasonable to uh, administer preemptive antiemetics in people being treated with Vistagard because it's very important to get the full course and not miss any of the doses. Uh, similarly, from the clinical and preclinical data, there does not appear to be any interaction with food. Uh, so that uh, oftentimes to minimize nausea, we'll recommend patients take medications with food. Uh, so taking Vistagard with a small meal uh, four times a day is really, uh, may minimize the nausea uh, and improve adherence. Uh, also practical is that patients uh, may begin to improve um, early on during the course of Vistagard and stopping early because of patient improvement um, would not be advised. Patients should complete the, com the five-day course uh, regardless of complete resolution of their uh, toxicity or lack of development of any symptoms from their overdose. Uh, so adherence, um, education that the patients cannot miss any doses. Uh, if a dose is missed, it probably should be replaced. Um, and then considering preemptive antiemetics as well as uh, food uh, would be some things to consider. I would like healthcare professionals to take this seriously. Uh, I have seen this in patients. Um, I have had a patient that died unexpectedly in an outside hospital. At the time that she died, we weren't taking care of her directly. I was hearing information from her daughter and putting the pieces together really retrospectively. It's not until we were able to be educated and had knowledge that this is something that happens to patients that in the appropriate recognition situation, they can be given an antidote such as Vistagard. It's a matter of taking this seriously. Uh, you may not have seen this in your practice yet. Um, and it's, it is one of those things that you could never see this in your practice, but in the event that you do have a patient who's experiencing these early onset toxicities or is experiencing side effects from an overdose or has had an overdose and you are not sure what to do, it's critically important to understand that the patient could experience life-threatening side effects and needs to have the opportunity to have an antidote administered as soon as possible. My personal experience with the uridine triacetate was actually quite an interesting case. Um, I was serving my time on the inpatient oncology service uh, when a colleague of mine's patient was admitted uh, electively for 5-FU administration. Uh, this was a younger gentleman with an advanced uh, squamous cell carcinoma. Uh, his uh, disease was complicated by pre-existing uh, end-stage renal disease and he was actually on dialysis. Um, so he was admitted electively after discussion with pharmacy and nursing and the clinician. Uh, to optimize the administration and timing of dialysis around his 5-FU, he was admitted to the hospital. Um, the dosing was uh, calculated based on his uh, dialysis schedule uh, as well as his uh, disease, and he was uh, given um, the administration according to the agreed upon dosing. He was clearly a candidate for therapy, otherwise he was highly functional. Uh, unfortunately, despite uh, the best efforts to uh, adjust his dose for his medical comorbidities, uh, within about 48 hours into his infusion, he was found to be uh, acutely confused. 
as well as in a cardiac arrhythmia on a monitor. Uh, he decompensated uh, quite quickly, requiring ICU admission, intubation, and hemodynamic support. Uh, thanks in part to a, a wonderful oncology pharmacist who was on our service uh, as well. Uh, we recognized this as a life-threatening toxicity most likely related to the 5-FU administration. Uh, he had other typical findings including uh, acute neutropenias, he actually had a cardiomyopathy, and then he went on to develop severe mucositis. Uh, we obtained uh, uridine triacetate as part of the single patient IND emergency use protocol uh, and it was given, uh, the full course was given 10 grams every six hours for 20 doses um, via a nasogastric tube and it was um, impressive to watch the patient's arrhythmia and cardiomyopathy resolved on echocardiogram, uh, hemodynamic support was withdrawn almost immediately uh, and subsequently his mucositis and cytopenias recovered with the addition of growth factor support and uh, he came out of the ICU and walked out of the hospital, and certainly he is uh, not inconsistent with the life-threatening or severe toxicity population that was included uh, in the VistaGuard uh, label. Uh, and he went on to receive uh, further chemotherapy. Uh, interestingly, he had quite a nice response to the 5-FU he did receive with a you know, decrease in his primary neck mass. I think the unmet need for patients who have gotten 5-FU or CAPE cytobine and experiencing um, significant toxicity is to take them seriously when they call um, or to think about when they come into the office with side effects that are really outside the realm of what you would normally see. Uh, the patients who are getting infusional 5-FU, it is important that they are talking with you as soon as they start to develop abnormal symptoms because they do have a limited window. With capecitabine, it could be, not always, but could be a little bit easier to get that patient um, an antidote because the cycle of therapy is longer. They're generally on for a period of two weeks or maybe even longer if they're getting radiation for uh, rectal cancer. But it's a matter of being able to tell the patient there is no such thing as you know unwarranted phone call. There's no such thing as a silly question. There's no such thing as um, a side effect that you should not be able to call and reach out to your provider for. I think the programs that are in place are really as a result of the antidote being available, Vistagard being on the market, of providers being open-minded when they maybe read a case report um, or hear from a colleague that this is a serious situation and not sort of saying, oh, it's never going to happen to me, it's never going to happen to my patients because you don't know who that patient is who could experience this problem. And unless you allow yourself as a provider to receive that information and think about that information and to uh, be wary that you could be seeing this in your patient population. The unmet needs for patients being treated with CAPE cytobine or infusional 5-FU um, are really uh, biomarkers for identification of patients who may be at risk for developing toxicities or overdose in the first place. Uh, so improvement in systems to minimize the chances of overdose, whether this is uh, adjustments to pump technologies and infusional uh, technologies, whether it's improved educational materials for both patients and practices uh, so that we understand and recognize these toxicities earlier, uh, and then identification of patients who may be at risk. So whether this is research technologies such as 5-FU uh, degradation in peripheral blood mononuclear cells being ultimately translated to routine clinical practice, uh, whether this is larger data set that leads to the appreciation of, of fine-tuning the dose based on uh, renal function, age, uh, BSA potentially, and underlying hepatic function uh, are largely the, are the greatest unmet needs. So e education and, and biomarkers of early toxicity are probably the most important areas uh, to improve our management of overdose and toxicity. I think where we are headed in terms of treating chemotherapy toxicity specifically for 5-FU and CAPE cytobine is awareness. And in our health system, it took just a couple of cases where we started out not having the education, not understanding what was going on, to then becoming aware of um, this as a serious clinical issue, becoming aware of the availab availability of Vistagard as an antidote, and then really insisting that we have it available. So we're not placing ourselves as clinicians in a situation where 
will sort of say, well, we'll wait to see if this happens and then we'll figure out how to get this medication available. We have it on our formulary. We have a supply um, in our pharmacy. We've disseminated the information throughout our health system that it's available. We know the mechanisms by which we're able to get this delivered to a patient if they have to have it at home. And being prepared, I think that's really the most important thing.